Hey, Brenda. Melody, just a mic check, are we good? We are. Thank you. We'll get started in just a moment. All right, I think we're ready to go. Welcome everyone. I'd like to call to order this uh, Board of Commissioners regular meeting, October 27, 2020 at 6.30. We're starting on time. Um, but first, before we proceed to the next step, I'd like to have the town clerk uh, read a statement about uh, our visibility. Thank you, Mayor. So I just wanted to go over a couple logistics with regards to the meeting, uh, specifically related to those participants that may not be very familiar with Zoom. So your main controls in Zoom are on the lower left hand side of your computer screen. These are your audio and video controls. Please make sure to mute yourself when you're not talking and to keep your video on as we are streaming live to YouTube. Next, I wanted to review some guidelines as to how the board members will participate in the meeting. The mayor will be calling on each board member individually to provide comments and votes. If you would like to speak at any point during the meeting, please raise your hand. Please be mindful of your background when raising your hand as you might have to bring your hand forward so that we can see it. Also, if we are in the middle of a presentation and you're raising your hand but not being called on, please feel free to speak up most importantly, we want to make sure that the board members are all able to participate in this meeting fully. So please text me if you have any technical difficulties so that we can suspend the discussion. Next, we need to call the roll call. Please indicate if you're present. Mayor Ronald Pappas. Present. Mayor Pro Tem Brenda McMillan. Present. Commissioner Ann Simpson. Present. Commissioner Tracy Westlick. Present. Commissioner Pedro Maureen. Present. Thank you. All members are present. Mayor, I'll turn the meeting back over to you. Thank you, Melody. Appreciate that. Next item, we'd like to move to the ceremonial opening. And But before we do that, during, we'll have the Pledge of Allegiance. But after that, we'd like to recognize a, a long moment of silence, if you will, for uh, one of our own here in the town, uh, a young lady, Ensign. Uh, Morgan Garrett had passed away tragically in a U.S. Coast Guard trainer plane uh, this week uh, down in the Alabama area. We want to recognize that um, passing and we'd also like to uh, let the family know that we are flying the flags at half mast in their honor uh, for this. Uh, we'll continue that uh, for the week at least through services and so I just wanted to uh, make sure that we recognize that so if we could all stand and uh, recite the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance 
to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Very good, thank you everybody. Our condolences out to uh, the Garrett family, uh, John and Jennifer, as I uh, have a common friend uh, that knows John, I've met him uh, a few times, and so heart goes out to him. So appreciate you guys uh, participating in that and allowing the town to take the position to uh, lower the flags. Town manager and troops, appreciate that, and thank you for that cooperation. Okay, next item up on top here is the adoption of tonight's agenda. Are there any changes to the agenda? Seeing no hands raised right now, we have a motion to adopt tonight's agenda. So moved. Roll call vote, please. Commissioner Moray. Aye. Commissioner Westlick. Aye. Commissioner Simpson. Aye. Mayor Pro Tem. Aye. Very good, so the uh, agenda is passed for tonight. We'll proceed forward. The, uh, as I understand it, uh, Melody, we had a mistaken comment on Publix and you've taken care of that? That's correct. Uh, we did receive a public comment. Uh, however, it was someone requesting information or to speak with a staff member regarding a property. Uh, Town Manager Wells uh, followed up with this inquiry and has resolved it. Very good. Okay, let's move down to the consent agenda. Any changes to the consent agenda tonight? Seeing none, I'm gonna ask for a motion to adopt the consent agenda. So moved. Thank you. Okay, we have a motion to uh, adopt the consent agenda. Roll call vote, uh, Commissioner Wesley. Aye. Commissioner Simpson. Aye. Commissioner Moray? Aye. Mayor Portem? Aye. Very good, the consent agenda is approved. So we're gonna move down to recognitions. We have uh, Dina Savinsky is going to uh, do a presentation on the recognition of the Lions Club, the uh, tree donation. So if she's not on here yet, we'll wait for her to log on. There you go. Hello all. There you go, hi Dina. Hi. Here's a presentation tonight. Yes, sir. I'm so, I'm happy to um, acknowledge the Waxall Lions Club. If I can get my screen to work. There we go. Um, they were gracious enough to um, donate two river birch trees at our 12 Mile Creek Trailhead across from Town Creek Park. Um, they came on Monday, October the 19th and planted the two trees um, as a donation to the town. Um, so they did all the, the work with our, for one of our park staffs, uh, Mr. Jimmy um, was helping facilitate that installment. Um, so I wanted to give a wonderful shout out to a community partner, our Waxhaw Lions Club for their volunteer project of planting two wonderful river birch trees that flank our, um, our trailhead sign and um, for growing for our future in that spot. So we're very thankful and appreciative um, for their service in this. Um, I'm, I, I'm sorry, I couldn't hear you. That's all right. That was my fault. Fat finger. Yes, sir. So, so we're appreciative. I, I had uh, the honor of speaking with them uh, earlier this year, and uh, they are really a good service organization here in the community. So we can appreciate their efforts to help us out in the park. Um, certainly like more volunteerism like that. It's great for the community. So, yes. 
however that got started. I'm sure it had something to do with you. So I appreciate that. And well, we, we love partnerships. So we're, I'm always looking for um, community partners. Partnerships are great. And so I appreciate you nurturing those all along. So I think uh, we'll have two very beautiful trees and we'll make sure we monitor them so they are healthy and uh, we don't get blown down in the wind or something as a newly planted kind of stuff, storms. So appreciate that. And if you can convey that back, if they're not on tonight, uh, if you can convey that back to them, we'd appreciate that. So thank you. I will. That. Thank you. Very good. Uh, I'll drop down to presentations. I don't see on mine that we have any presentations tonight. And so we'll move down to old business. Old business, uh, item number F is the approval of resolution 2020018. And it's the, except the offer to sell the real estate at 216 uh, West North Main, that is the uh, Nivens building. And so town manager, Jeffrey Wells, you're up. Thank you, Mayor, and good evening, everybody. To facilitate the sale of town-owned property at 216 West North Main Street, the town has utilized the negotiated offer, advertisement, and upset bid procedure as described in the North Carolina General Statutes. The town has received an offer for purchase of said property, also identified as the Nivens Price Building, in the amount of $1,230,000. The town received the required 5% deposit of the purchase price from the buyer and thus started the upset bid procedure. The board authorized the property to be advertised for the upset bids at the October 13th regular meeting. The notice ran on October 15th and no upset bids were received within the required window. Since no additional bids were received, the Board of Commissioners may authorize sale of the property. Both the attorneys for the buyer and seller have been working diligently on all the paperwork required for closing. We feel confident that with final action from the board, the transaction will close tomorrow. Some special thanks are in order for us to get to this point. A very special thanks to our attorney, Mr. Buckley, for getting us into, into position to close this expeditiously. Also special thanks to our public services staff for clearing out the leftover stuff that was in the building and an additional special thanks to our interim downtown manager for coordinating some of the communications between the town and the buyer and being on site when needed. The recommended motion is to adopt resolution 2020-018 as revised, accepting the offer to sell certain property owned by the town of Waxhaw. Thank you, Mayor. Very good, thank you, Jeffrey. We've, we've come a long way guys, in short order we've been able to accept uh, an offer on it, working hard with the attorneys, both uh, Mr. Buckley and uh, the buyer's attorney. We were able to demonstrate that we are a business savvy organization. We got through the ups and downs of any transaction like this stuff. And I think it's very important to recognize uh, the town attorney for his efforts in getting this over the finish line. So Charlie, appreciate all the efforts. I know. Town manager is working very, very closely with you in this every step of the way. I know you've been working with the buyer's attorney as well. It was a nice clean deal because of all the uh, ahead of time preparedness. So I thank you very much for that. Well, but, uh, one down. Thank you, Mayor. It was a pleasure to work with, uh, with the staff in getting this done and with yourself. And, and let me add that I, I believe the resolution says authorize the staff to um, uh, to close the deal, I think we need to also add, and the mayor, since the mayor is going to be signing the documents. I think we had that in there earlier as we were reading the resolution. And uh, just it, it has the mayor as one of the listed people that the mayor, uh, town clerk, attorney. If the mayor is listed, then we're okay. Yep, he's listed. We're good. Very good. Thanks, Charlie, for pointing that out. Yeah, I think we uh, have revised that or added it uh, this afternoon to make that complete. So thanks for the again. One, one quick note. Um, we had um, the resolution number is 2020-018. That's uh, what Manager Wells provided. And on the agenda, it's got an additional zero in there. So just take that into account when you're making the motion. 
So it's 2020018, correct? Or two zeros. Three zeros. Only two, two zeros between the, uh, before the one eight. Show me two, not three. Not three zeros in there? That's correct. All right, we can uh, resolve that easily, obviously. So we'll go back. So what we have before us is the, uh, uh, would like a motion to approve the uh, transaction. And so do I have a motion. Can I ask a quick question before the, um, before we do the motion? And it was just brought to my attention just a short while ago. Uh, Commissioner Westlook had uh, asked a question before with the sale of the building um, that it not be torn down. Is that something that um, is being considered that the building itself, because of its nature, would not be torn down? Well, let the town manager address that. It is not part of this particular sale, but our zoning and design standards protect the validity of any building that would go there. Uh, the design standards for the current building, or if something happened to that building and it ha had to be rebuilt uh, from the ground up, uh, we feel like we have the design standards that would allow it to go back. Honestly, it would probably be better than what it is now. Okay. All right. Um, there's no, I'm sorry. There, there's no protection of it as a the a historic designation in the wording. It is not a historic landmark, no. But it is protected in our current UDO by our form-based code design standards, and then in our new LDC, if adopted it will be protected by our design standards in that as well as uh, commercial building design standards. I think what Commissioner Westlick is, is uh, getting at is uh, the protection of the aesthetics and, and for it to remain uh, similar to what is surrounding it so that we have a uniform appearance uh, to the standard at the very least to what, was, what, what is there now. So in the, the sale, that is not part of any documentation. It's just the sale of the property. But as far as that goes moving forward, the zoning would reign supreme on how the building looks. Is the zoning worded in such a manner that it protects uh, the facade yes. to remain as, as it appears now? Well, you wouldn't want it to remain as appears now exactly because of the vinyl that's on the front, but I understand what you mean that, that yes, if they had to uh, renovate that building facade on the outside or build it new, uh, they would have to build it like the other structures within downtown. That is part of the Main Street Zoning District and the commercial design standards. So the, the previous agreement we had with another company, I thought we added something in there to protect that building. Is that correct, Charlie? Do you recall? Well, that was a different type of project. That was a downtown development project under the statute, and we had a public-private partnership in the development of that property. This is just a simple sale to a under the private negotiation subject to upset bid. And so it's it's a totally different uh, uh, statutory process that we're operating under. This is not a downtown development project. And so if it was a private owner that was selling to a private buyer, the same thing would apply. Uh, you know, zoning would, would control how the design of the building is moving forward. I feel very confident that our Main Street zoning are currently in the UDO. At, I think that portion is good too. Um, I know that, that some people uh, are not a big fan of form-based codes, but uh, you know, in this particular case for uh, this particular property and where that's located, that's good in the UDO and we've got that covered. Uh, when we get to adoption of the LDC, uh, it's covered in there as well. Okay, we um, 
We have a motion on the floor to um, make the uh, approval of this. Uh, so do I have, uh, I guess we're at a point of roll call vote. Somebody needs to make the motion. I think we made the motion, but all right. So we'll make the motion again to be clear. I'll make the motion to approve resolution 2020018 to accept the offer from Magnolia Hill Farm LLC in the amount of $1,230,000 for real property located at 216 West North Main Street, Nivens Price Building, parcel number 05113027, and authorize the town staff, attorney, and mayor to finalize the sale of the property. Okay, we have the motion up. Uh, roll call vote. Uh, Mayor Portem. Aye. Commissioner Moray? Aye. Commissioner Wesley? Aye. Commissioner Simpson? Aye. Very good. Thank you. The motion is passed there. So again, congratulations to everybody who participated on that. That was a, uh, um, a very intense deal going all the way through. A lot of documents, so appreciate all of that. Okay, next up, uh, we've got uh, the approval of the master transportation plan, some more information and some uh, report from uh, Matt Huber. Matt, uh, you're up, if I can get you on the screen. There he is. Okay, good evening, everybody. Well, uh, so I'm bringing back what was previously presented uh, in, in pretty good detail at the work session. Um, and so tonight I'm hoping we'll be able to, to finalize master transportation plan and, and adopt it so that we can put it into place and move on to, uh, to building the improvements we know we need to make. So a quick overview, um, we developed the master transportation plan to provide a new model that helps us identify, prioritize, and track all of our planning improvements in a more deliberate and, and transparent fashion. Um, what I'm hoping to accomplish here is that we keep this in front and center with all our discussions and we continually update the information that we pull from when we make uh, our decisions that are informed with the most up-to-date information because changes at the state level and their programming and certainly funding, we've seen how they've impacted our efforts. Um, and also in the, in the private sector, uh, they move at a different pace as well. And so when we're trying to understand where should we be uh, focusing, oftentimes uh, we have reports that, that get outdated pretty quickly. And, and I'm hoping by following this new model, we'll, we'll be able to, to keep everybody uh, informed and be clear about what our funding uh, priorities are and how we're going to program improvements of, of interest both administratively and, and to the public. Again, we've got a lot of, of, of previous studies, downtown area plans, uh, corridor plans, uh, NC-16 has a plan, long range transportation plans, and it takes a long time to put them in, into place and by the time uh, we really get to the point of, of trying to understand what they're telling us. A lot of things have shifted and then we're always playing makeup um, to a degree. And, and so hopefully this, this provides a better resource for, for our planning and, and action. It does include a, a, a very um, well-developed map book section. A lot of our uh, information is, 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 regularly updated in terms of streets that we maintain, traffic uh, counts that we get from, from our own studies and from uh, TIA analyses. Um, all these things need to keep, need to be brought front and center uh, at each time we, we make these decisions. And so the map book itself, while it's a part of the report, it's, it's more of a living document. It's not always, even if we adopt this, this plan, the map book will always be changing it's just a reference point, but it's, it's important 
that we include it in, in the overall report so that we're, we're getting the most up-to-date information uh, when we consider changes uh, going forward. So I think uh, the, the two key features to, to this um, concept of this report are uh, a report card, which is a means to um, basically grade what our current um, conditions are in terms of traffic volume, safety, uh, other developments, uh, even, even if the costs of, of improvements are feasible, we try and compare those in a, in, in a uh, red, yellow, green kind of visual aid means so that we can get an, an understanding of how well we're doing as it goes forward. And so uh, if you remember back to the work session, it was a lot of red on the screen saying, hey, we need a lot of work in a lot of areas. And I think that's, that's bore out by our, our conditions right now in terms of our, our traffic congestion uh, and inability to get around town as easily as we would like. Um, and so moving forward, as we start to take down projects and, and even at the state level, the development level and, and our own projects, we'll hope to see those reds turn to yellows and greens and that will show us and the public that we're following through on, on the improvements we, we intended to make. And, and again, if, if that stays red through a couple of iterations, then we know we need to kind of uh, step up our efforts and, and provide uh, more immediate progress, again, to keep ourselves accountable and to, and to be able to show, hey, here's where we were a couple years ago, and here's where, we're, where we are now, and where we want to be going forward. Uh, so that's kind of a, a, a more subjective way to show it. Uh, because a lot of these kinds of projects don't necessarily equate with one another. We try to break it down into, into simpler graphic terms. The other, I think the major component of the report is the prioritization. And, and what we did here was through our old plans, through our current understanding of project and, and that, that we have a need for and through the public input sessions, uh, we, we categorized a number of improvements across a lot of different modes, not just vehicular, but also bicycle and pedestrian projects that had value and worth. Um, and we provided, created a matrix that weighted them and scored them. And in order to, to get them as easily comparable to one another, um, so we're not trying to make decisions on two distinctly different um, and, and really, I think we had about 16 projects to start from for this first round of, of what we want, might want to consider moving forward as we do contemplate a, a CIP program uh, coming next year. And basically, at the end of this prioritization exercise, we got two different tiers of, of projects that were split down the middle. And the concept is we would be um, making real uh, deliberate conversations with the top tier items and how best to move them forward and fund them and program them for completion and leave the lower tier projects um, alone until they are, we, we get better information that, that raises them up to consideration or we move other projects off the top tier and make room for new ones to come up. Um, and and it's, it's continually a changing process and, and it's a very difficult um, kind of atmosphere to manage across years and years that these projects take when um, we, we know this funding has to stay intact over years as well. So in terms of trying to make this a, a, sustain, a sustainable program um, that helps make all our decision making a lot easier and, and kind of separate uh, the confusion that that can often uh, occur is what will happen going forward is we'll, we'll accept ideally the, the first uh, prioritization tiers and make our CIP decisions based on that. Um, then anytime we, we propose to change the tiering, either projects uh, have been completed and moved off or there's enough reason um, to change something from a bottom tier to an upper tier, or maybe we don't have it in the, 
in the prioritization at all and, and we want to get a feel for where it falls before we would um, move in that direction we would rescore and and bring the the uh, prioritization back to you for adoption to make sure that uh, it's very transparent our our processes both internally and to the public to to ensure that we're not um, you know playing a shell game so to speak or, or making changes that are not in the light of day and, and moving away from already agreed upon um, priorities. So again, I would say probably every two years, we would want to update the plan on its face to keep pace with our CIP. Um, and that, you know, this, this first round will, will be a good measure of how well we think um, that's going to function. I think it's, it is a good document that provides a good foundation and framework but will continue to evolve as we get more comfortable and as we see how it's performing for us. One thing that, that was pretty clear, and I think you'll see when I move over to what the prior, prioritization tiers um, fell out this, this um, round, is that the bike and ped projects, even in this ability to try and um, weight projects and, and be able to compare them uh, to one another, they still don't perform well with the traffic improvement projects. And so I think my recommendation right out of the gate is, is that these bike prep projects, because they showed up in the, in the lower tier across the board, we should move them over to strictly within the pedestrian plan update, which is already scheduled and, um, and have a separate kind of funding considerations for how we want to adopt and move those forward separate from the traffic ones. It just, uh, I think it'll become clear as we, as we move forward. So this is really the crux of, of what I'm asking uh, everyone to, to kind of agree to tonight and, and move forward from. Uh, we, we see the two different tiers uh, across all the projects that we contemplated with this, with this report. Um, tier one, the highest scoring project was NC-16 and NC-75. I think that mirrors our own internal understanding and the public's uh, sentiment as well. Uh, so in, in my mind, the way these numbers fall out help justify that I think we're in the right direction because these projects that came to the top are projects that I think have the most value and merit for us to put our resources toward now and the ones in the second tier uh, are really ones that we shouldn't try and get too caught up in until we've, we've um, got these first several out of the way already. Um, so uh, the second one on the scoring list is crosswalks across NC-16, uh, specifically at locations where the subdivisions are on one side of the street and the sidewalks on the other, businesses are on the other. Um, Again, it scores highly where we would want to move forward with getting um, the pet activated lights, rapid flashing beacons and proper crosswalks, proper sidewalks and, and handicap ramps in those locations so that the, the pedestrians uh, are, are well provided for and safely across what is one of our highest uh, volume roads uh, for traffic. Third becomes the Matt. parkway. Uh, yes. I have a question here. In the tier one, I don't see the intersection at um, Gray Byram and 16. Did that not make the list because no, we- No, and that's a good point. Thanks for pointing that out. Basically, what, what, what is, is kind of a disclaimer to this is all the already funded projects would not be, are not considered, right? Um, that okay. is funded, and so it's already on its, on its schedule, um, such that it is with, with the UT's kind of current issues. But um, things like the widening of 16, the, the grade separated crossing of 75 and the railroad, those are, are in the map book and they're on the list of, of, of things when we look holistically at what's going on in the town. But when we talk about how do we want to consider improvements, the, the ones that are already planned for and funded are, are distinctly left out. And, and that can be a cause of confusion uh, when, when you think about, well, wait, we've got these things that need to be done quicker, where's that? So thank you for, for bringing that up. 
back to the tiers. The third tier is, is the parkway in the east direction, the north um, from, from 16 over to Waxhaw, Marburn Indian Trail Road. This one's broken into two different sections. One is just what's within town limits and the other is what is outside of town limits and really not subject to uh, so simply the town making a decision to do something with. But it does show up, both those uh, sections show up as a, as a need to focus on. Um, and, and we will move forward in, in moving it up the, the STIP, the State uh, Transportation Improvement Model, because this one's so big in cost and outside of our limits that we really need to partner with DOT and, and likely developers in that corridor to bring this to fruition. But it will be a, a, a working item uh, from now until it's, it's in place as far as uh, engineering is concerned. F next to the, the first leg of the extension is, is a widening of Broom Street, specifically below where uh, the widening of 16 is programmed from NCDOT. That's, it, it's widened out to four lanes until the parkway, and then it stays its two lane configuration. So it, it would be incumbent upon us to um, program improvements to add a center turn lane so that through movements can continue while turning movements get moved out of the way and provided for with a center turn lane to keep the flow uh, in that uh, prime through direction uh, un unobstructed. Hey Matt, so Todd had something to say. Todd, did you want to go ahead and make your comment? Yeah, I was going to ask him, why is Howie Mine sidewalks always so low on the totem pole? Yeah. And that's a lot that's of people a, use it as dangerous. Right, right. And, and, and so it's, it comes in because one, it, there's already an existing sidewalk for it, uh, albeit substandard. And, and that's where the difficulty of trying to get these PED projects to compete well with the, with the transportation projects. We, I haven't really found a great way to talk about them in the same sentence because they do different things and they both have value. But when we talk about like a safety and a traffic flow and things like that, a lot of categories are, are null when we talk about a sidewalk where a roadway can have sidewalk with it, but a sidewalk doesn't necessarily have roadway improvements with it. And so it, it's kind of what the scope of the project does almost um, negates its value when we try and compare projects that can do more than one thing at a time. Uh, but it's no less inf important to have those conversations. That's why I think if we, if we move forward, we take the sidewalk projects like Howie Mine, Pine Oak, and, and the Greenway, and we talk about them in the context of other uh, pedestrian projects in the master plan for pedestrian, uh, then we do try and make them compete with the, with the transportation. And, I think a decision will need to be made what kind of monetary set aside should be provided to keep sidewalk and pet improvements moving forward, but not always suffering at the hands of the traffic, the vehicular improvements. Does that, um, does okay. that make sense? And, and to be clear. Yeah, but I just know these are so dangerous. Right. Agreed. And, and we're also they uneven and yeah, we're, um, we're resubmitting for a, a CDBG grant to try and get that sidewalk project funded um, over the next year. We, we tried it previously and, and didn't get enough responses in the survey, but we're gonna try it again because I agree, we, we need to, to address that one. It's a DOT facility, but they don't focus on sidewalks, so I don't think anyone else is gonna do it if we don't. Um, right. But if we can get the grant, that's that's free money that then we don't have to compete against every other project. So in some way, shape, or form, we know we've got to address that. And, and hopefully that comes back up for conversation. If we don't get the grant, it comes up as a part of the pedestrian plan update. So Matt, so if I understand what you're saying is that the sidewalks don't rate high in this because of the context that this is a transportation, more roadway type of um, matrix, if you will, as opposed to just a pedestrian only. Yeah, and so we, we kind of learned this as, 
as we went through the process when we as much as we tried to create fair categories to to uh, compare what a project from cradle to grave entails in terms of design right of way cost any um, environmental issues when you do that and you compare a road project to a sidewalk project there's there's not enough unless we artificially weight them which i i want to try and shy away from they they just don't compete um comparatively across the, the same playing field um and and so i was hopeful that that wouldn't be the case but it almost in order for it to to change we would have to artificially manipulate i think um the the categories and that kind of flies in the face of the purpose altogether which was try to put them all on the same playing field and i think uh, i found out through the process that some of these playing fields just can't be made even and and we've got to uh continue to to work on how we want to have these conversations when when i can't get data to help support so right so by, by prioritizing this this would help us in terms of getting grant or outside funding but if we wanted to take down a sidewalk project on our own that that we could i guess make that decision even though it's it oh yeah absolutely I, I think that's where that's where more value can come when i can show you a tier of, of transportation projects and a tier of sidewalk projects mm -hmm. and we try and think of them in their own right and not competing against one another this way it was a it was a it was a good effort we did it because we got a lot of feedback from the public um that there were projects of, of interest and and why would we right out of the gate want to uh, not consider them but i think what what we found out in trying to to uh, accomplish things across the the multi-modes is is we really weren't doing um the sidewalk the pet improvements and to a lesser extent the bike ones which i think we know we need to to move forward in um as a as a facility that the town will have a better quality of life if we can engage those other mechanisms but well, i think we're so far behind in just road work um these other ones they need to stand alone on their own and let's consider them and the the amount of of overall funding um separate from 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 the roadway projects and and again that's it, we're, that we're talking about it now in this context already kind of proves to me that that this is helpful to to bring up in the context of this report and whether we follow it this way or a different way we are talking about the importance of all of these and how best to make these decisions um, so that one doesn't continually get ignored because we obviously have needs in both areas uh, that that we've not caught up to yet and i think we know and, and jeff knows we've we need a major cash infusion to to catch up much less break new ground uh across well i mean as an example we have like wax on parkway extension east and the co i think that's we be pretty cost prohibitive if we had to fund that versus we could probably do a sidewalk project on our own so you know i think it's good to have it prioritized in terms of we needed to go out for funding that we have this um in a document but i but you know we need to be mindful of what's what's most where the priority lies but i think again if it's something that we're doing um with our own money there's other things i think that we could get the low-hanging fruit if you would maybe do a sidewalk project instead of you know we're not going to be able to tackle i think the parkway east on our own so right and and so i mean again this is the this is the first piece to the cip this is a partner piece right uh, this helps compare it not not really talking about dollars except in in the uh in a, in, a, in a sense where we weight them and and not try and say oh projects that are too expensive we shouldn't take on what what this can do is okay we're not going to buy out the whole parkway east but we will provide enough funding that we keep moving it up the stip or we we move the design or right away acquisition anywhere we can to, to continue to move that closer to a uh, completed or, or funded project uh, instead of continuing to let it languish on its own and we look at some of these other projects that maybe don't necessarily have the value but hey we think they're cheaper and and we, we, we focus on those instead um, I think this and the CIP combine together to make the, the real um, 
defining programming for the town because these are multi-year documents and, and we'll have them in front of us in black and white and paper and what we've approved and allotted um, and agree that that's the direction we need to follow through. These projects take so long, we, we can't have a, take a, a, a short view of them, hurry up and get them done. And then we think about something before, you know, like unfortunately the TAP grant is a sidewalk improvement that's gonna have a great impact to downtown, but it's been so mired in, in the issues with CSX and DOT funding that we, we can't show, we can't prove that we're actually making progress. We basically, we, we are on paper and we're, it's there, all the effort is there except for the actual construction. And that's what's so frustrating for me is when we, we, we don't look at the projects on this list that are funded, but a lot of effort has been, has been made uh, to get them funded, to get them on the schedule, and to and to be able to move on to bigger and better things, but we're not seeing the fruits of that labor because of issues we've got with the with the funding model and the state's um, issues with with its cash flow and and now COVID impacts. And Matt, just to be clear on that for everybody who's watching and observing this, this is certainly a prioritization chart we know as things develop around us, these things can move around. And it seems like, you know, we've got all these projects that are tied to some type of participation financially from others. And so again, when we talk, you know, there are new developments every day, as you know, some of the conversations both on the Waxhaw Parkway, uh, east and west sides, we've got some new developments in conversations anyway with those uh, even as late as this week. So again, these are not necessarily what has to happen first, but these are our chosen priorities and they will move around based on our ability to do them financially internally or something else that changed in the financial picture from any of the participations, namely NCDOT or and or private money. Right, absolutely. And uh, I think what this does is it, it, it continues to keep them in front of us so nobody's surprised or, or, or um, confused, so to speak. But what they represent is, is months, years, very thick email chains and, and folders full of, of effort to, to move them to at least get them to this point. And if not to a point where they're not even on the list because they're out in the field and they're done. And then the whole process just starts over again. We're never gonna be done. With, with, with building the town and, and improving to meet the needs as we grow. Um, but the previous model that I've seen is, is we lose sight of some of these longer term issues over staff changes at local level, the DOT level, uh, the board changes, and all of a sudden there's new, new impetus behind projects that, that uh, may, may have more value. Uh, but we can't lose sight of, of the long-term goal and that's that all this work needs to get done. Let's make sure that the funding is, is locked up and in place and we've got the political will to follow through on it. Um, I've got a lot of designs that I inherited and there was no funding to them. So it's a great idea and they're great designs, but I have no ability to, to, to turn them into anything real because the, the political will was, was gone. So as we look back, just finished the, the, the top tiers, Waxhaw Marvin Road at Barnes Grove Church. This is the one here because uh, again, the, what we're trying to plan for is not just what's within town limits. We also have uh, a commuting, uh, major commuting traffic and it is affected by things just outside our sphere of, of, of town limits. Um, that's not to say we shouldn't be thinking about them and, and while this is on the list, it, it almost will get an asterisk because the county submitted this with its critical intersection analysis and it scored well enough that they will move forward with having it, uh, their own grant to address this one. And, and so we won't have to necessarily put any resources or, or further brain power toward this, but it does show we weren't just thinking uh, specifically locally about the town, but when we can consider improvements, we consider um, the, the, the scope of the area is a little bit more outside of town to be sure we're not um, thinking too uh, 
inside our own uh, our own box. But uh, again, that one is not one that we will see in the CIP discussions because it should be managed externally. And uh, and I think that just shows that we are a part of a of a bigger whole. The county it plays a role, and the state plays a role. And so all of those things work together. And this this report does speak to that as well. Then we talk about Waxhaw Marvin Road at Pine Oak Road. This was when we first started the small transportation planning efforts. This one scored highly in the context. It was a safety project that DOT was likely not going to, to identify anytime soon. It's just an, a, a, an a odd angle that, that Pine Oak makes with Waxhaw Marvin Road and it's a safety issue, but the volumes there and the, the, the safety, uh, the crash data doesn't move it up into a real hierarchy of, of where these other projects have been scoring. But we also know that um, it, it's, it's small enough in a scale that we could take it down uh, a little quicker than most. And we're finding that these grants now are so backlogged that they put construction five to 10 years out, even though they've identified they're important enough to, to fund now, we're not gonna realize the improvements until much further along. and so. Um, the fact that the, the bridge at Waxhaw Marvin Road is programmed for replacement and this is a, a detour route that's identified scores it highly enough that we want to consider. And when we talk with NCDOT about replacing the bridge, where do, where do we want this intersection to, to, to fall into place? Um, again, just because it's in the top tier doesn't mean we're definitely going to find the funds, but it's we want to talk about um, programming it before we talked about other ones on the lower tiers. And then finally is on the top tier, the Parkway Extension West, which uh, again, it, it's more in line with something the town could, could do on its own because it is within town limits. And we know the widening of 16 is going to stop at the parkway. And we know now that the grade separated crossing for the CSX siding is going to, to provide a means to easily get across 75 and the tracks to Waxhaw Marvin Road, but we have a disconnected piece. Uh, it's, it's not gonna score high enough in the, the STIP, the state's um, funding mechanism that we'd see it done in, in the next 10 to, 10 to 20 years likely. And so we know um, if we wanna take advantage of what relief that provides to our downtown traffic, uh, trying to find a means to fund that and, and bring that across the finish line in line with those other DOT improvements is, uh, is worthy and it, and it does score again, scores well against the other projects. I think when we look at tier two, it basically says all the things, all the other things on Waxhaw Marvin corridor plan, we know in, in, in the future, Waxhaw Marvin Road as kind of the parallel to 16 is gonna need a center turn lane, it's going to need intersection improvements to uh, keep pace with growing traffic, but it, it still isn't at a level where it should supersede all the projects on the, on the first tier. And I think that's the, the basic takeaway. And I think it, it, to me, it, it, it kind of supports that the way we've created the matrix is, is serving um, the process well and will help us as we move forward and, and some of these projects change and some other ones come into place, uh, I feel confident that the, the rating system will, uh, will make it easier for us uh, to not have to reinvent the wheel every time. So uh, again, most of the, the real detail information we talked about at the work session and um, to not bog down the, the conversation here, but uh, we got a, I think we were well understood that uh, we were in the right direction here. And so uh, the requested action tonight is to, to make a motion to approve the plan, which is staff's recommendation or to deny adoption of the plan uh, and potentially have to go back to the drawing board and make some tweaks. Um, but, but I think right now it's, it's doing what I had hoped and, and, uh, anxious to kind of move forward and start putting these um, these programs into play. And so that's why I brought it before you tonight for them.
Did I put you all to sleep? It's okay. I was uh, I was waiting for the question slide to come up. Sorry, Matt. Oh, oh there, you, there go. you go. That's what I was waiting for. <laughs> you still have the floor, Matt. Yeah, absolutely. If uh, if there if there are questions, I can I can certainly take them. Um, but ultimately, if there are none, that is the requested action to adopt. Any questions for town engineer? Seeing none. Okay, so a lot of work has gone into this. And Matt, I applaud you for hanging in there as long as you have to push all this forward. A lot of moving parts, a lot of moving people. That's a lot of great work. And so I, I applaud you and your entire team for putting this together. I know it was a lengthy presentation to put together and to explain. I think you did a great job explaining it. Uh, I think we all know it's a living document as we just were talking about earlier, but we've got to keep it, you're right, got to keep it on track. We want to make sure we keep moving forward. We've got to make sure that we keep reviewing it to make sure that uh, you know, priorities haven't changed or funding circumstances have, haven't changed as well. So it looks like that we're looking for a requested action on a motion to approve or deny the adoption of the master transportation plan as presented. Board, do I have a motion? Uh, I'll make the motion. A motion to approve the adoption of the master transportation plan as presented. Very good, thank you. <clears throat> Any discussion? Okay, we have a motion to approve. Roll call vote, please. Mayor Pro Tem McMillan. Aye. Commissioner Moray. Aye. Commissioner Simpson. Aye. Commissioner Wesley. Aye. Outstanding, thank you very much for that. Matt, you're off one more step closer. Very good, thank you everybody. All right, appreciate it. Okay, got the screen back. All right, we're up to uh, new business. I remember G got the appointment of the Board of Commission members to fill a midterm vacancy. As some of you may or may not remember, the Board of Commissioners have been moving through the process of receiving applications to fill a midterm vacancy on the Board of Commissioners. That's term ending in December of 2021. Uh, earlier this year, due to our friendly COVID situation, we uh, we realized that we weren't getting the applications in, people's lives were changing around us, so we uh, made a motion and approved in uh, April to suspend our Section B of our rules and procedures regarding this. But we've now wanted to move forward on it, and uh, during the last uh, few weeks, we've uh, set in motion to garner up uh, six applicants, and so uh, the application period was closed at the end of September. And we did have a, a special meeting uh, of the Board of Commissioners on Monday, October 19th, to interview all of the candidates. A lot of discussion has gone on about this topic. And so what I'm looking for right now is, uh, what's the board's pleasure? May I? You may. Um, first of all, I would like to thank those who submitted their names um, for consideration to the Board of Commissioners and hope that they will all continue to um, be actively involved in the town and um, in helping in some form or fashion. Um, with that, uh, I would also like to make a motion um, that the candidate list be narrowed uh, for further consideration to the following candidates. Uh, Terry Nolan Range, Jason Hall, and Althea Richardson Tucker. Okay, very good. Thank you, Mayor for Tim. Uh, we have a motion on the floor to uh, approve the three names that uh, for further consideration down the road here. So, any discussion? All right, I'm recognizing Commissioner Simpson. I too would like to echo uh, Mayor for Tim's McMillan's um, acknowledgement of all the great candidates that we have. Uh, come forward. There's some really talented people and I really would highly encourage those who aren't selected in this process to continue on and get involved in one of our board and committees because we need you. Um, as I've been reminded that as, as a board we have suspended our rules of procedure regarding the application process. However, 
I really would like to um, enter into the record and state an excerpt from our rules of procedure here. Uh, it's, it's item number two, and it says, after debate and discussion, the board will select two candidates from a list of qualified applicants. Um, I believe we should follow the historical process that we've used by previous administrations as recently as in 2019, in which two of the current board members are actually uh, followed. By making this change of nominating three instead of following the two nominations, I think it's gonna lead to possible public negative perception, such as lack of transparency and behind the closed door agreements. On Monday, um, October 19th, as a board, we met with and interviewed six candidates for this position. We've had over eight days to review uh, their applicants, and I personally have watched our interview video three times to look over the considerations and narrow my um, choices to two candidates. I also know that Commissioner Moray has actually personally reached out and has spoken with all the candidates too as part of his decision-making process. And so I would like to have my fellow commissioners just consider um, this decision of going down to possibly two candidates instead of three. Okay, comment. I'm gonna recognize uh, Commissioner Moray first and I think uh, I saw Mayor Pochem's hand go back up again too. So Commissioner Moray, you have the floor. I believe that because so much discussion has taken place that it's, it's important to consider all options and further explore this uh, in agreement with what uh, Commissioner McMillan said. I think uh, all the candidates uh, came through with enough that we, we owe it to them to further explore uh, and make sure that we are making the correct uh, decision. Thank you. Mayor Patam, I saw your hand up earlier. Um, I also understand what Commissioner Simpson has stated regarding our rules of procedure, but due to the COVID and the pandemic, those rules were suspended by Mayor Pappas. And in moving forward with the three candidates, it does give us a little more opportunity to question them in more detail, um, to get further clarification maybe on some things that we would like to get clarification on and narrowing down the topic from the number, the large number that we did have to this number that we do have now and proceeding forward, uh, be able to make a uh, more informed decision. Okay, I'm gonna recognize uh, Commissioner Simpson again. So as part of this motion, if we're going to narrow this down to three candidates instead of following historically the two candidate um, process, um, are we also going to set forth a special meeting so we can have another open interview with three candidates or are we expected to interview these three candidates individually like what has been occurring? Because I would like to keep the, the process transparent for the public so they can see um, what's going on. I agree that the process should be transparent and that we should have another open meeting so that, the, um, so that everyone can see exactly what's going on and um, be as clear as possible with our decision when we do make it. Okay, any other further discussion? Oh, one more comment, go ahead. I will be comfortable moving forward with the three candidates if we can uh, schedule a special meeting and, and interview the three candidates in an open session. I can amend my motion to include that we do interview the three candidates in a special session and moving forward. Great, do we have an expectation on the time frame? Is it possible due to the fact that we are now moving closer into the holiday season and giving the candidates time to, um, with their schedules that uh, we interview them prior to our break before Thanksgiving and hopefully by, by our meeting on November 23rd to be able to vote at that time? Great, so that's a very long motion. So does everybody have that motion? Got it in mind? I'm where we're heading there, uh, I'm going to go up to Commissioner Moray first. Is there any way to possibly have that sooner than, than November 23rd? Once again, um, our town clerk would have to move, uh, would have to contact all candidates involved, and then you have to also consider their schedule. We have another meeting within the next two weeks. We have to consider our own schedules within that two week process 
So allowing fairness to everyone, then if we can do the meeting within the next two weeks that it gives us ample time then by November 23rd to be able to vote. Did you have another comment? I just wanted to echo that. I think it, some of that would need to depend on uh, town clerk coordinating everyone's schedule to move forward. And, and if we can do our interviews and then move forward, we can maybe set a, a decision date at that point. Okay. Okay, so the, work on it. the motion is still on the floor to uh, move those three names forward and then to um, go ahead and reschedule from logistics. Obviously, we have to reschedule uh, the meeting times or scheduled meeting times with all the candidates. So from that, are we clear on the motion? Oh, do I see Tracy, do I see your hand or not? No, I'll, I'll just comment. Um, I, first, I want to also thank everyone that interviewed. Um, every single one of of them showed that they had good decision-making skills and, and could do the job. So I do want to say that as well. Um, I, I support uh, what Commissioner McMillan is asking for. Um, I think this is such an important decision and in, in my individual discussions with everyone, I, I feel like there's enough out there um, that we need to further interview uh, the candidate. So I would, would support that. Okay, very good. So we're clear on the motion to, the short story is to uh, narrow it down to the three candidates that were mentioned and have the town clerk uh, further schedule those times according to everybody's availability. So we'd like to accomplish that uh, before the Thanksgiving holiday if we could, that's the goal. So I guess at this point, it's a roll call vote. So on the motion to approve, uh, Commissioner Moray. Aye. Commissioner Simpson. Aye. Commissioner Westlick. Aye. Mayor Portem. Aye. Very good. Thank you. And I will also echo the sentiment. A lot of people put a lot of time and effort to come to us. We went through a lot of applications, some filtering. Uh, unfortunately, some that had applied uh, were not residents of the town. So we also applaud them for wanting to get involved in our community as a whole. So we've, uh, we're now reaching out and we're getting recognized and a lot of people want to join our team, so to speak. So I will say publicly, uh, I appreciate everyone who has gone through the process with us and also appreciate those who will continue on with us. Uh, the town clerk will orchestrate this and notify those candidates and we will go from there. So thank you very much for that. Uh, we'll move down. Uh, uh, last year we had no general public comments, correct, uh, Melody? That's correct. Okay, very good. So we're going to move down to the town leadership reports. Uh, town Manager Wells, you're up again. Thank you, Mayor. And I'm sure probably the last thing that you want to hear is the need for more meetings. But uh, we are uh, in the very final stages of our land development code. Uh, putting it together in final draft form. Uh, we expect to uh, hopefully have it uh, distributed out to the board, both electronically and in hard copy uh, at the end of this week. And then as we uh, have discussed briefly, uh, moving forward, uh, having uh, several special meetings uh, moving forward to try to digest this in chunks. I, I, as I said before, I think it's very important to methodically go through it just so the board understands it and of course able to make your comments and make your any adjustments or tweaks that you want to see in the, um, in the code before it moves forward. So I guess hearing what we uh, just heard your decision was uh, in the prior item, uh, we will uh, also be reaching out uh, as well through Melody about scheduling the first two uh, review times, uh, but we will certainly let you prioritize first the, the meeting, special meeting for your candidates, and then we'll just work around uh, that as best we can. And uh, hopefully we can uh, try to fit in as many meetings as we need uh, through uh, the holiday season with the hopes of still staying on schedule at the uh, first quarter of next year with adoption for it. Uh, lastly, just one other comment uh, in regards to Halloween. Uh, 
uh, from the town's perspective, uh, we're encouraging all of our residents to be safe this Halloween. As you're determining with your children how to go about Halloween this year, pay attention to the public health guidelines and recommendations and let them, along with your own good judgment, help guide you. Certainly wish everybody well. You know, Halloween is a, is a great time and it really kicks off the holiday season. Uh, nobody gets more excited about it than my kids. So I want to uh, uh, wish everybody a great, safe Halloween as that comes up this weekend. Thank you. Thank you, Jeff. Um, just a statement to follow up with that. We're trying to devote as much time as we possibly can so that all of us can understand every step of the way. So it's going to call out for a lot of all of our cooperation schedules, and whatever. We'll work around most people's schedules and uh, we'd like to do that. We'd like to keep it on track for at least one meeting a week so we can get through it. If we get through the first page the first day, that's fine. We're going to go through every page. We're going to make sure we understand it. So town manager slash planning director is going to have his hands full with questions and answers, I'm sure. But I appreciate the effort that everybody's willing to put through to bring this document forward. It's been a long time in the making. And Jeff has worked diligently on it since he arrived a year and a half ago. So we have moved forward faster in a year and a half than maybe the prior five or eight years before. So Jeff, I congratulate you on bringing this document forward with all your team to make it understandable. We would appreciate certainly all your team members being available to the commissioners. So if there's any questions either during or after uh, these meetings on a, on a weekly basis, that we can get those addressed and, and move on to the next step. So I appreciate that a lot. Thank you. Thank you. Very good. Next up, Miss Dina. Hello all again. There we go. All right, I'm going to give you a heads up on what's going on in programming and events and some park updates. This always gives me trouble. There we go. Remember, technology and me do not like each other. Oh my goodness. Yay. Program guide. So we have our new program guide up and we're halfway through the season already. Um, so please uh, take a look when you get a second. It's up on the website and how you register for all of our programs and events is through our rec desk site. Our Adult classes are getting a lots of notice lately. Um, we have a full class and the second pop-up one that we um, made is almost full. I think we only have two spots left in that November 5th. So if you'd like to join us, go ahead and sign up as soon as possible. We also have next week, um, wonderful partnership with um, Capices downtown. And they're gonna do uh, make your own pizza with, um, with our youth. And then seniors, we have a um, class for uh, senior massage um, so we can do some health and wellness. Also next week, we have our family fun night. We're doing a mural and a pop-up skate night at our skate park. So this is fun for the whole family. We're gonna have prizes, um, some giveaways, but we need you to register. So please go ahead and register on Rec Desk and we would love to see you next, not this Friday night, but next Friday night. Again, we also have adult classes coming up for um, our adults and seniors. We also have um, a youth program in the following week uh, with our PD community officers are helping us out and another pottery class for the teams. Um, we had great success uh, last month and we're bringing it back. Fitness. So every Tuesday and Thursday, Miss Amy is um, taking our citizens on a walk or in a downtown area. 
She'd love to have more participants, so please go ahead and shout out to Miss Amy and register on RecDesk. Also, every Friday we have um, yoga at Town Creek Park, so we'd love to have you a part of that as well. Senior fitness is, um, has started, um, so if you are interested in that, please um, give the office a call and we'll get you contacted. So last weekend, so with COVID, we have had to rethink every program and event. So we had our first drive-through parade slash candy giveaway slash um, costume for your vehicle contest. Oh my goodness, we had over um, 150 cars, gave out over 400 bags of candy, and these are healthy bags of candy. And so we had lots of smiling faces, lots of wonderful, thankful community members. Um, we also had some spectators out um, checking out the, the cool cars coming by. A special thanks to our downtown businesses and the town hall team and the park and rec team for making this happen. We're and PD uh, because this is one of those, we are learning as we go and the team effort to make a post COVID event happen is awesome. So I wanna just to give out a wonderful shout out to the whole team and our community for supporting and being a part of a cool event. Um, hopefully next year we'll be able to have our, our original Fright Night, but we made the best of it and everybody had great smiling faces on. So we really appreciate that. Oh, and on Facebook, there is a album of lots of pictures of all those wonderful smiling faces. Coming up this Friday is a spooky movie. So please join us. Um, actually, we're full, so we're going to put you on a waiting list. Um, we got fold up today, so go ahead and be on that waiting list. So if there's any openings, we can fit you in. Our next movie is November the 13th, but this Friday we are going to do candy, um, candy give out, costume um, contest as well, and just have a great night um, fellowshipping, socially distancing fellowshipping, um, but having a great time as well. Uh, save the date, our Veterans Day ceremony is coming up on November the 11th at 11 a.m. We are gonna do a in-person and virtual offering. So we stay within our COVID guidelines. And um, so look for more information of that coming out soon about the agenda and how to um, come into the venue when we're able to have that event. Also listed here is our events to the rest of the year. Um, we are planning in short um, stints because of COVID. Um, that way we can best suit the community on what we're allowed to do and when. An update about our downtown park. So gave you a preview last time about um, that we're working on it. I wanted to give a, a really brief overview of the timeline. So we're in October now. We're gathering all that information. We had an awesome field trip on the site. Um, next month, we're talking back with y'all, BOC, um, the Park and Rec uh, Committee, and then doing public engagement, doing a survey, having a concept plan about an updated concept plan for the park. December is gathering all that information that we just learned, coming back in January, doing another public engagement, talking back to the BSC and Park and Rec, and then at the end of January, coming with that plan um, and understanding the budget that goes along with those phases as well. We're super excited about this. It's, you know, it's long-term coming, and so we are just bubbling with joy of, of this coming about. As always, we are looking for community partners. Um, that's how we succeed as a community. 
Um, so we're looking for partners for upcoming programs and events from January into the new year. Um, so if you would love to partner up with us, we would love to partner up with you. So please come and touch base with me or staff here at Park and Rec, and we would love to have your input. With uh, COVID, we are in still phase three until November the 13th, and that's Friday the 13th. Just saying. And then um, we are, are staying in this pattern until we have more information from the governor's office about the next phase. And as always, I leave you with our vision and mission and thank you for your support. And we're excited to be able to do community engagements again. Um, but again, we're doing it safely and um, with the parameters that we're allowed to work in. Any questions? Very good, Dina. Thank you very much. Um, a lot of work went into that as well as uh, I participated in that little uh, land tour over there. And uh, I got to tell you, it is exciting. Finally, get out there and walk it, understand it. Uh, just again, to backfill in for some of the board members as well on this, uh, on that park project, we're, we're tiptoeing into it, making sure that we are all in sync on the spin and the scope of work. The consultants understand that right now. And so we're going to step at a time, make sure that it happens for us. And uh, I have tasked Dina with a very specific role in this. And I won't say what that is right now. So <laughs> she knows what it is. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, just a joke. But uh, we're looking forward to making that happen down there. I think it's a, uh, a long time coming. It really is. So appreciate the effort and the work. And everybody who walked with us, uh, Matt and Jeff and uh, and Blair was out there and the consultants and Dina and myself, we had a great walk. It was a, it was a good discovery. So thanks, Dina. Thanks for the effort. Okay, uh, moving on. I uh, see Matt, you're up to bat again. Thank you. Hello, everybody. Just some quick laundry list items. Uh, one thing that's pretty exciting, uh, if you're as, as bored as I am with Golly gee, the, the, some of the work I get to do. We actually um, have engaged Union County. We know for a long time we've had an issue with debris in our creeks and, and the fact that these storm events, they push them downstream and they get caught up on our bridges and, and out in the middle of nowhere where we really can't, really can't get to them. And we've tried to figure out how do we best manage that. And we've been able to partner tomorrow. We're gonna be sending in a crew of, of, of employees and county staff up the creek on kayaks and, and identifying a lot of down debris that the county will be able to, um, through a grant that they have, start getting contractors lined up to remove that debris and so it doesn't continuously build up and create hazards uh, in, that, in that waterway and uh, across private properties and public properties and, and, and across the, the town limits. So it's pretty exciting. We've been kind of scratching our heads as how best to address that because it's not a simple task. And, uh, and lo and behold, after some effort from, from Orion and, and partnering with Union County, we found a, a, a means to, to address that. And so I want to bring that up that one, they're going out in the creeks tomorrow to, to highlight it, and then we'll have a game plan about when and how we'll best um, address that, that stuff. And then subsequently, uh, next week, if weather permits, we will be completing our um, final leg of this year's paving program. Um, one of the, the high points is, is adding parking and paving uh, Price Street uh, at the corner of church. Um, we'll add some well needed parking to downtown and, and finish off that, um, that block. As well, we will be uh, adding a, another parking space to East Main Street where we had to, the East South Main Street where we, we lost the tree, um, but we did gain a parking space and so that'll get paved. Um, we're also repairing some of the parking on South Broom Street where uh, utility repairs have left that uh, a, a gravel mess. So that will be looking a lot cleaner and smoother, uh, hopefully in the weeks to come. Um, the Woodleaf neighborhood has a bad cul-de-sac. We're gonna finish out um, the worst repairs that are needed there with this contract. 
before we come back and do more of our ceiling operations next year. Um, Church Street gets a little bit of a patch. We replaced a storm drain there that failed. Uh, and so we'll finally uh, complete the pavement there. Uh, and then we are looking to, to widen uh, one block of McKibben at where Millview um, is with the, the business there. there the two-way traffic really can't get in and out of McKibben at the same time and it backs up one to 75. So we're hoping to very quickly widen that so that two cars can pass at the same time without one getting stuck out into 75. Um, and I think that's, that's the highlights, but again, uh, weather permitting that will all get accomplished next week and we can move on to, uh, to other things. Any questions there? And I have a quick question, clarification on the, uh, the creek cleanup in there. We've talked about that for a long time and congratulations again on getting that project rocking and rolling, getting it out of there. Uh, remind me of the reach north and south, or I guess that's east and west on that. How far can we reach? Because as you know, we can you know, clear it all out in the town limits or within our own reach. And if you get a traffic jam down south of us or to the west on the South Carolina side, it's like a it's like a wreck and you get a stall on a freeway. So what happens? Are we engaging uh, South Carolina as well somehow? Uh, I don't think in this stage right now, we're just getting the county staff to kind of have a look and understand the, the breadth and scope of, of what's to be seen in the creek. It's really hard. It's, it's, it's somewhat inaccessible for a lot of the, the stretches. So this is kind of our first go round. And, and I can't imagine that one, uh, the grant is going to cross those boundaries, but certainly conversations can, can be made with, with uh, Lancaster County in, in how best to ensure what we're doing uh, provides value. And if there's anything they need to, uh, maybe we can partner with in that regard. That'd be great. I think it's a great first step because we had to clean it up for not only, you know, the danger part of it, because a lot of that stuff moves around uh, in a flood, but certainly, uh, you know, getting it picked up out of the way so you can see what you're doing is going to really help. So it's a great first step. So kudos to you on that. No, we, 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 we got lucky. I was um, kind of running out of options when, when we made this connection and and it happened easier than most things have, have gone down in, in this town. So uh, we really got lucky. It's good karma. So keep up the work. Appreciate Thank it. You. Thank you. Any questions for Matt? Anybody? All right, Matt, thank you very much. We're going to move down to any comments or uh, questions from the Board of Commissioners. Any hands? You guys want to get out of here tonight. I love it. All right, seeing none. Uh, on that part, uh, we have nothing on the closed session agenda tonight, so I'm going to ask for a move to adjourn this meeting. So moved. Okay, we have a, a, a motion to adjourn the meeting. Roll call vote. Mayor Pro Tem? Aye. Commissioner Moray? Aye. Commissioner Westlick? Aye. Commissioner Simpson? Aye. We are adjourned. Thank you, everyone. Appreciate it. And uh, we will keep moving forward. Charlie, thank you very much for all your help this week. I know we put the tag yeah, on. Really quick, but I appreciate that. Jeff, Melody, thank you all. Melody, if you could just keep on going on the logistics of getting those people uh, together again. I appreciate that. Happy thank to. you, everyone. Be safe. Bye. Be safe, everybody.